All right, you guys, Rich here. What we're gonna do, I'm gonna show you how to put on some uh, a PB uh, brake kit. This I got from uh, PB Brakes, and uh, they came out awesome. So this is on the Jag XF, and you can see there. Um, let me turn out the light so you can kind of see what that looks like without it. But anyway, <clears throat> um, so I got one on, and I'll show you the things to watch out for when I was putting it on. But uh, here's the uh, here's the stock one that I had that I originally painted gold, and I took them off. So it's they're pretty easy to, to get off once you once you understand a couple of things about it. It's pretty easy to pop off. But um, just to show you what comes in the kit, there's brake lines that come in the kit, um, but those don't fit on this, and we'll sort that out. But this is the caliper. Um, it's pretty awesome looking. I got the anodized number five orange. It's sort of a darker, darker orange. And then I bought these uh, heat, heat resistant uh, uh, vinyl stickers. So, and these vinyl stickers that I've got on the car right now um, have actually held up very well without any clear coat. So I haven't been too worried about it. Um, so we'll see how these guys do, but they look pretty cool. So I'll show you how to put this on. It's pretty simple, really, a couple, four bolts and then two for the bracket. And then uh, this is the new uh, rotor, so it's a floating rotor. Um, and they've got these little clips here that keep it from rattling. That tends to be a problem with the floating rotors. And then there's the stock one I pulled off, so you can see quite a bit, quite a bit uh, big of a difference. Um, the guys at PB, I think it was, uh, um, his name escapes me right now, but uh, he sent me a, a spreadsheet, an Excel spreadsheet to figure out what the brake bias is on this car and then we'll try to match it so um, I haven't bought the rear kit yet just because they're expensive and just want to do the front and I'm still within good tolerance of uh, not having to worry about the, the being off by the, with the brake bias so so that's good so this is the mounting bracket <clears throat> so when you pull the pull the old one off this is what you got to put on and mount and then uh, the caliper mounts to it so I'll show you some things about it but uh, I gotta move all my junk over to the other side of the car and jack it up and we'll go. So I'll hey show you guys, guys here we got the wheel off and I'm just gonna show you some of the highlights. I'm gonna highlight a couple things that I had issues with. If you don't know how to take off a freaking wheel, then you shouldn't be doing this. So go watch another video or something. But uh, on the other side, they've got those uh, brake pad sensors. This side does not have it. And usually we'll go into this tab here. But what I did was just disconnected it there's a disconnect up here that's attached to this this bracket right here and you just disconnect it and then fold it over and wire tie it and you're good to go you can also clip it and splice it together you can watch videos on that too i just left it um, and it's only on that side it's on the driver's side and on the rear side on the passenger side as well but anyway um, so a couple of things You'll notice this bracket right here is actually part of the brake line. So this, this is not a nut that you can unscrew. It's actually welded to this bracket right here. So if you wanted to, what that means is, this is steel braided, by the way, so it's a nice line. But what that means is you can't, uh, you have to disconnect this entire assembly here and connect your new PB brake line to this. Um, and find a coupling and then somehow to mount it. But uh, I didn't want to mess with that. So I'm just sticking with the stock one. I realized it was stainless, or, uh, it was steel as well, braided brake line, so it's it's nice. And then uh, we just attach it to the back backside. Um, I still use the same um, um, screw in the back um, and uh, to do that. So. And th this, this line right here, I believe, is for the uh, anti-lock system. So that can just pop off and out of the way. But um, anyway, let me go take this thing off. And there's a ton of videos on how to do that. You don't, have to un you don't have to undo any of this stuff right here. So there's just two big bolts on the back side. And I think they're, oh gosh, what are they? Uh, they're 15 millimeter. So they're just on the back side here, two, two big ones. Break those free with a hammer. They're pretty. They're they're pretty tight on there, and then this whole assembly can pull out. Before you pull the whole assembly out, though, disconnect the brake line, hang it up real high somewhere. It's going to drip and leak, so you might make a mess. So have something underneath to catch it, and uh, this whole assembly will pop off. And then we'll 
whack this guy with a hammer. The other one was really tough. It was rusted all on there in the back. So just shoot some WD-40 in between all this and let it sit for a minute or two. And then I also shot it around this ring part here and just let it sit. And then I got uh, a piece of wood, a thin wood on the backside and my, my persuader and give it a few good whacks and uh, it eventually pried loose. So it should pop off. Before you do that though, oh, this side doesn't have them. That's interesting. The other side has these retaining clips. It had two of them actually. And uh, I'm not sure why they do that. I mean, is it to prevent when your wheel comes off that this doesn't come off too? Well, you have bigger problems. But anyway, that clip, those two, there are two clips on the other side that come in here and just get a little uh, flathead screwdriver and you can pry that out and pop it off. You might see that in some other video. But uh, we'll go ahead and pull this guy off and then I'll show you how to uh, install the PB brakes and what to look for. So. See you in a minute. All right, so we got the caliper off. I got the brake line just quickly strung up there with some paper towels around it. It's gonna leak. I'll try to work fast so we don't lose too much fluid. Um, and it's catching in all my rags down here for right now. But uh, anyway, there's the caliper, the stock one, and the PB brake one. And this thing is huge. I can barely pick it up with two fingers, and this one I can easily pick it up. It's probably half the weight. I didn't put it on a scale. I probably should. And, I'll put that in the notes, but uh, significantly lighter, which is great for unsprung weight. Should help for some of the handling a little bit. Maybe not noticeable for me since I'm just a poser, but um, at any rate, we'll try to whack this guy off. So now you just want to whack this guy off from the backside and he'll pop right off and then we'll put the new one on, new plate on, and I'll show you, show you that piece. All right, got the rotor off. That one came off really easy. The other one was a pain in the neck. Um, so. What you have now is the bracket, and uh, this is, this comes from PB Brakes, and you'll get the right kit and everything when you when you get it. But you want this in the right direction. There's really only one way it could go. You could potentially flip around on that side, but um, but you want it this direction. So you want the the L-shaped piece towards the inside, and so you mount it this way. So the swoopy part is this direction and uh, the bolt comes in from the inside to the outside. So we'll go ahead and tighten that up. So I do this first, then go ahead and put your rotor on and slip it on. And I got floating rotors. Um, and uh, these are nice because I got them on my motorcycle too. And it helps with cooling mainly and also doesn't transmit a whole lot of heat to the hat. And so I've had a couple of wheel bearings go out on other cars, which I don't know why. It probably got some water in it and failed, but. Anyway, that's just another way of preventing it. But this is an aluminum hat with a cast iron rotor. And you wanna make sure it goes in the right direction too. So follow the instructions, it'll tell you how to do that. And make sure the, the swoops go forward like you're biting the air. Um, so we'll go ahead and mount the bracket first, then the rotor, and we're gonna test fit everything. So we'll dry fit all the bolts. You don't wanna put any of the uh, Loctite on it yet. So bracket, rotor, and then slide your caliper on and pin it in. We want to make sure that the caliper is, or that the rotor is sitting right between the two pads. So that's in the instructions as well. In some of the photos, that carries over nicely. So the piece that they didn't talk about was this and how that actually mounts. So, um, and then what to do about the brake line because they do give you brake line. So I've already talked about that. But okay, so we'll put this on. Yeah, it's magic. Right. Caliper in place. <laughs> um, when you put this on, just make sure it's seated all flush all the way around. Um, so that when you spin it, you shouldn't hear any noise, no scraping, okay? Should move freely. And so this is the piece you wanna look at here. Let's see if I can get some light back here. Um, so you want your, I just, this is just a shim you use if you have to shift the rotor, or not the, the caliper left to right in order to it be centered. So if you look, make sure your pads are pushed all the way to the back side on either side before you insert, insert the caliper and then just run your shim in here and see if it fits snug or if it's loose, real lo loose or real snug. Um, this one fits in there just fine. Look how even it is. So, and you can just feel it. Looks like we've got two on either side here and we can push this pad back and there we go. And uh, it's pretty even there too. So there we go. Make sure your rotor's even. There you go. And you can see how 
even it is between the pad. You want the same gap here as over here. Let me point that out with my spacer. So you want the gap between the pad and the disc. Say the same on the front and back side. And the reason it's not right now is because this thing wants to bobble a little bit. So push it and then take a look and make sure it looks good. And that looks perfect. So I didn't need a shim on that and that guy. So it looks really nice. Um, and then what we'll do from here, I've got all the bolts just snugged in. Um, and I just take them out one at a time and I just do them one at a time and then torque them down. Um, and then we'll, once I've done that, then we'll go ahead and attach this guy, uh, the brake line on, and we should be set. Make sure to wash your hands too, because as you know, if you've worked with brakes before, brake fluid will melt paint off cars. So don't get your nasty hands and stuff or even on your gloves and be touching the paint or the end. This is anodized. I really like the metallic look on it. Um, and hopefully it'll last as long as the uh, as the the other option that they have, which is they're, they're painted. Um, so, but, uh, and then bleeding. Bleeding is super easy to you. Know, just get one of your kids or your wife or your friend in the car and uh, there goes a drip. You can see I'm leaking. I've got it up high so that it doesn't uh, just flow right out. Um, but bleeding brakes is pretty easy. Just have them pump on the brakes and open that guy up and have him run into a thing. Try, try to avoid getting it on here um, and just keep it clean. So we'll see you in a minute. All right, we're back and I've taken down the, uh, the steel braided brake lines that are the stock ones, like I said, um, and uh, just cleaned everything up, made sure nothing's broken. We'll just add this uh, sensor wire back into place. Let me just pop right in. And they should be able to do it. Oops. Right in there. And then this one was there. Oh, come on, you little bugger. And then this one was here. So there we go. All in place. And we've got the banjo bolt. I used the washers from the PB kit because they're crush washers, so you want new ones. You don't want to use the old ones, but this is the old bolt and it fits right into it just fine. And you got enough clearance and then just make sure you wipe the backside off and check for, check for leaks. And then we'll check for leaks again once we uh, pressurize the system and bleed it. So if you guys don't know how to bleed, get, go watch another video on how to do that. It's pretty easy. So there's two, there's one on either side um, on these eight pots. So you get this side, the far, near side and the far side. I usually do, I don't, I don't know that it matters which side you do. The whole chamber is going to fill up um, all the way around. That's what this crossover piece is right here. So we'll probably want to do the outside first, but you could probably consult somebody a little more knowledgeable on that one. I don't think it really matters because air is going to come out. I checked both sides on the other one. I didn't have any air in the line, so um, we're good. And uh, we should be set, and then we can put the wheel right back onto that guy. And uh, um, voila, new rotors. So we'll go ahead and bleed it and I'll show you the finished product. And then we'll, maybe one of these days, I'll talk about how much different it feels. So we'll, we'll find out.